Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. I do want to encourage you to check out our other podcast, uh, in particular the Old Time Radio Superman Show. And you can check that out at otrsuperman.com. From 2008 to 2018, I presented every existing Superman serial, as well as every existing Superman half-hour episode from the golden age of radio. It took me uh, 10 years to get through, and we're working to restore the entire series after a server crash by the former host site. By the end of this week, we'll have the last 532 episodes up and ready to listen to, and we'll be working on getting the remaining 484 episodes restored. So we're adding episodes six days a week. You can check that all out with at otrsuperman.com. Currently, we have stories that feature Superman battling kryptonite, teaming up with Batman, and taking on the Ku Klux Klan in the Clan of the Fiery Cross. Check it all out at otrsuperman.com. Also, starting tomorrow, we have a brand new series of The Amazing World of Radio, starting at amazing.greatdetectives.net, our spring series. And then there's the video version of this podcast at videotheater.greatdetectives.net. And then our World War II podcast, thewar.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for this week's episode of The Fat Man. The original air date is January 6th of 1955. And uh, the title on this one is Murder Rings a Bell. There he goes into that drugstore. He's stepping on the scale. Weight 239 pounds. Fortune, danger. <laughs> Who is it? The Fat Man. And now, here's the Fat Man in Murder Rings a Bell. before noon when I walked up to Lung Toy's antique shop. It was in a pretty crummy neighborhood over near the river, and I wondered why a guy as well known as Toy would keep his shop there. He must have made a lot of dough in his day and had heard of him many times. But I never met him. When he called me that morning, he said it was urgent and insisted that I come to see him right away. Good morning. You would like to buy something? I am looking uh, for... Certainly. I have some beautiful mandarin shawls. Uh, they're in this room back here. But I don't uh, want... This way, please. Just follow me. Okay, brother, okay. In here, if you please. You will pardon, Mr. Runyon. I must take precaution. Whatever you say, it's your show. Are you Toy? Yes, Mr. Onion. I am a long toy. Why the mystery act, Toy? You will sit down, yes? Thanks. There are those who watch me, Mr. Onion. We must be careful. That is why I did not wish to come to your office. That is why I ask that you come to me here. Okay. Why are you being watched? As the vulture watches the hunter to lead him to the feast. So do my enemies watch me. I see. Yes, Mr. Onion. You see, I know the whereabouts of something valuable, and I want it. That is why I asked you to come here this morning. I want you to get it for me. If you know where it is, why don't you get it yourself? I would be followed. And if I succeeded in acquiring the object, I might not return. Oh, I grant it. What is this thing you want to get hold of? 
a black lacquered box or chest known as the Laughing Lotus. Why is it so valuable? It is very rare and very old. It was once the jewel case of the Emperor Sing Fu, and its value as an antique is extreme. You know where the box is now? Yes. At the moment, it is in the hands of people who are completely unaware of its value. And how do I go about getting the box for you? It is not what you are thinking. I have no desire to acquire it in an illegal manner. I want you to buy it for me. I might add that I am prepared to pay you rather well if you do as I desire. Yeah? How well? If you conclude the purchase in a satisfactory manner, I will pay you $500. If you fail to make the purchase, your fee will be $250. Why should I fail to buy it if the owners don't know its real value? The box is being sold this afternoon at public auction. It is just possible that there may be higher bidders. How high do I go? You accept my offer, then? Yeah. I'll give it a whirl. Here is $5,000. Send it all if necessary. I think that sum will be more than sufficient. Unless... Unless what? Unless the knowledge of the box's whereabouts has fallen into the hands of those who also know its worth. Okay, Toy. Now give me $250. As you wish. Fine. You can give me the balance when I deliver the box to you. Uh, one more thing. How do I recognize this? It will be simple. The box is about one foot in length and six inches in width. It is black lacquer. And the lock is of a particularly unique design. It is made of ivory and beautifully carved in the design of the lotus flower. This lock is one of the reasons for the great value of the chest. The ivory lock, huh? It is the only one of its kind in existence. It was made by the ancient and renowned Chinese locksmith Son Yongwei in the year 400 B.C. It has a complicated combination the mechanization of which involves the proper balancing of a number of hidden and delicate ivory tumblers. And this combination, do you have it? He who is trapped and tortured by the enemy cannot disclose that which he does not know, Mr. Russell. Meaning? A meaning that once you have acquired the box, you will bring it at once to me with all speed and precaution. And if I don't? If you don't, Mr. Russell, your ancestors may well rejoice in the reunion which will soon take place. Well, who are you, beautiful? This is the radic office hour, Mr. London. I've been waiting 40 minutes for you to come in. I don't remember any appointment this morning. I didn't have an appointment. But I have a job I think you'll be interested in. What makes you think I'll be interested in the job. The fee I'll give you for getting something back that was stolen from me. Say, a thousand dollars. How did you get in my office? Why, well, I, I just walked in. That won't do, sweetheart. The door to this office was locked when I left at 9.30 this morning. But it wasn't locked. Maybe you had another visitor before I got here. Yeah, maybe. Say, what are you... Keep your hands off my pocketbook. Who do you... Sit down, beautiful. I'll have to spank you. You lay a hand on me and I'll have you arrested. Go ahead. The cops don't like a legal entry either. You think I broke into your office? Uh Uh-huh. What were you after? I don't know what you mean. I told you the door was unlocked. It's not in this bag. Of course not. I'm not after anything. I want you to... It could be somewhere else. Don't you dare touch me. Don't worry, sweetheart. I'm not going to search you. Maybe you are telling the truth. Of course I am. Of course. That's a lot of cash for a beautiful girl to be carrying around. Where'd you get it? That's none of your business. Everything is my business when I'm working for you. You're not working for me yet. And I'm not so sure that I want you to. Okay, sister, there's the door. No. No, wait. I need your help. I really do. Good. I'll just take a thousand dollars then. Here's your pocketbook. And I'll start talking. What's your name and what was stolen? My name is June Frost. What was stolen? A very valuable antique, a Chinese box. 
a little larger than a cigar box. It's called the Laughing Lotus. I see. I missed it about a week ago. Couldn't the police find it? I didn't go to the police. Why not? Because, Mr. Runyon, I was afraid. Of what? I was afraid the man who stole it might... You know who stole it from you? Yes, of course I do. That's why I came to you. Who do you think it was? An antique dealer named Lung Tong. Next, we have this beautiful old oriental chest, ladies and gentlemen. It once belonged to the ancient Chinese emperor, Sing Fu. It's called the Laughing Lotus. A note the luck carved in the design of the lotus flower. The name originates from the intricate lock. The lotus lock is so well made, it is said to laugh at thieves. Uh, note two, the black lacquer. Now, if you wish to bid, simply raise your hand up high. Thank you. Uh, we'll start at $100. Uh, Who will bid 100 Oh, good. 100 from the stout gentleman on my right. 200 200 200 uh, Yes, madam, yes, I see your hand. Uh, 200 from the tall lady in the black hat. 300 uh, 300 from the small man sitting on the bench. Thank you, sir. Now, uh, who'll make it fall? Fall, 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 fall. 400 from the fat man. I beg your pardon, sir. I should say stout. <laughs> um, uh, now, uh, 500. Who'll say five? Five. Uh, come, come, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, that's better. Five from the little man on the bench. And six? Six? Who says six? Do I see six? I do, I do. Six from the stout gentleman. Seven, seven, seven. Do I see seven? Seven from the tall lady? Oh, where are you, madam? Uh, oh, yes, I see you now. Uh, seven it is. Eight? Do I see... <laughs> eight? <laughs> well, what happened there? What happened there? He's fainted. This man has fainted. Stand back. Stand back. He's fainted in his air. Why, it's the man who was bidding against you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can't bring him around. Uh, is there a doctor present? Never mind. This man doesn't need a doctor. He's dead. Dead? Yeah. Somebody shoved a silver-handled dagger in his back. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Quiet, everybody. Quiet. man has just been murdered. I don't try to leave. The police will be here in a few minutes, and they'll want to question you. Hey, you auctioneer. Where's that tall woman? The one in the black hat who was bidding on the chest. Uh, why, uh, she was standing right over there, sir. Yeah, but she's not there now. Where's that Chinese box? Oh, there it is, over... Why, it's gone. Who is the dead guy, Mac? Charlie French, a well-known trigger man with a record a mile long. He's been mixed up in every racket from Frisco to New York. Any fingerprints on the dagger? No. You better tell me all you know, Brad. Now, what about this tall woman in the black hat? I didn't notice her until she started bidding. She disappeared in the crowd during the confusion. What were you doing at the auction? Trying to buy something, but I didn't get it. What? A Chinese box called the Laughing Lotus. Hey, I didn't know you were interested in antiques. I'm not. The client of mine is. Oh. Who is the client? Long Toy. The old antique dealer. That's right. You know him? Sure. I've known him for years. Hey, I don't get his angle on this. What about this box? He said it was very valuable, and he was afraid to bid on it himself. That's why he sent me. Hey, maybe Lung Toy can explain something we found in the murdered guy's pocket. What? This piece of paper with Chinese writing on it. Here. Well, it's been torn away. Where's the rest of it? That's all there was. Lung Toy's Chinese. He ought to be able to tell us what it means. Yeah. But there's somebody else who isn't Chinese who might tell us more about it. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't expect you so soon. Did you get it? No. What happened? <laughs> You're too beautiful to be such a liar. What do you mean? Fix a couple of drinks, baby, and let's start over again. And this time I want the truth. But I've told you the truth. Quit lying. The box was never stolen from you because you never had it. Where is it then? A tall woman who wears a black hat has it. A tall woman? But where did she get it? She stole it this afternoon at the auction. What auction? How about that drink, sweetheart? Here. Okay. Let's start again. Who's Charlie French? Charlie, Charlie French is here? You dropped your drink. 
Where is he? Where did you see him? On a slab in the morgue. Charlie's dead. But how? Where? A Chinese dagger in his back. Chinese dagger? No. No, you're lying. You're trying to frighten me. You're wrong, sweetheart. Charlie's dead. You'd better start talking straight. Yes. Yes, I'll tell the truth. That's better. Who's the tall woman? I don't know. I can't understand that. I'm afraid. Afraid of what? See what happened to Charlie. I'm afraid I may be next. The Lassie Lotus is very valuable, Mr. Runyon. And whoever has it may be in danger of... But you haven't got it. No. No, I haven't got it. But I have something that's just as important. What? This paper with Chinese writing on it. Here, I'll show you. It's half of the combination to the lock. Toy can tell us where the Chinese dagger came from, Brad. He's an expert on Chinese antiques. I think he can tell us more than that, Mac. Here's his shop. Let's go in. Yeah. Hey, what's that? It sounds whenever anybody opens the front door, so Toy will know he's got a customer. Sort of a Chinese version of the old country store. Ah, Mr. Runyon. It is indeed fortunate that you come at this time. I have a friend here who... Why, Lieutenant Mackenzie. Hi, Owen. It is indeed a pleasure to see you after so long a time. May I present my friend, Mr. David Hawkins? How do you do, gentlemen? How are you? Mr. Hawkins is a collector of rare antiques, Mr. Runyon. It was at his request that I hired you to acquire the Laughing Lotus. I see. Uh, yes, Mr. Runyon. Uh, where is the chest? I didn't get it. But why? Where is it? What happened? A guy was murdered, and during the confusion, a tall woman in a black hat got it. See her closely? Not very. Whoever she is, the box won't do her any good without an axe. Why not? She hasn't got the combination. How do you know that? Because I've got it. Take a look at these two pieces of paper, Toy. Hey, where'd you get the other half of the paper, Brad? Never mind. What about it, Toy? Yes. Yes, it is the combination. Here, uh, uh, give it to me. Not I... so fast, Hawkins. I think I'll just keep it a while. Uh, no, you, you, you can't. I... I have a right to that combination. You've got a right to nothing yet. But if, if I get the box... You didn't get the box. So the combination won't do you any good. What? Yeah. That's it. In that case, I'll say good day, gentlemen. I think our business is finished. I... I am so sorry, Mr. Hawkins. What does the writing on the paper say, Toy? It is in code. But it is the combination to the Laughing Lotus. It must be deciphered. Can you do it? Yes, but it will take time. Where did you find it? Half of it was found in the pocket of the guy murdered at the auction. The other half came from a girl. A beautiful girl with blue-black hair done in a knot at the back of her head. The last time I saw her, she was wearing a green suit. Matatoy. This girl. Yeah, June Frost. Do you know her? I do not know her, but I have seen her. Where? Here in my shop. Day before yesterday. What was she doing here? She bought something from me. What? A pair of silver-handled Chinese daggers. <laughs> doing here? Quiet, sweetheart. You might frighten the other guests in the hotel. What are you doing in my room? Waiting for you. How did you get in? Haven't you heard, sweetheart? The same way you got into my office. What? Why were you searching my room? I was looking for something. What? The truth, maybe. The truth? Yeah. You want to save me the trouble by telling it to me? What do you mean? I told you the truth. Not yet. Listen, sweetheart. You hired me to do a job for you, but you lied all the way. No, I didn't. I don't like working for liars, and I won't work for a murderer. A murderer? You don't think I... That's just what I do think. 
But if you don't start telling the truth, I'm going to pin a murder up right on your beautiful head. No, no, you can't. I didn't murder Charlie. You do believe me, don't you? No. So that's the way it is. That's the way it is, baby. Then we're through. Uh Uh-uh, not yet. Give me the paper. I haven't got it. Where is it? What did you do with it? I gave it to Lung Toy. You gave it a long toy. You... It's no good, baby. Where are the daggers? What daggers? The ones you bought from Toy Day before yesterday. Why, they're here, right here in this drawer. Well, what's that got to do with... What matter? Daggers. They're gone. That Lung Toys Antique Shop. All uh, right. Here you are. Keep the change. Oh, uh, thanks. Hello, Brad. What are you doing here, Mac? Official business. Where's Lung Toy? Upstairs. I want to talk to him. Won't do any good. Why not? Because we found the other silver handled dagger. Where? In Lung Toy's back. Hey, 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 don't make so much noise. You want to wake everybody in the hotel? Who are you? I'm the bellboy. You better run along, mister. It's late. Listen, I've got to talk to Miss Frost, the lady who's staying in this room. Well, she's not in now anyway. How do you know? Because I saw them go out a little while ago. Them? Was somebody with her? Yeah. What did they look like? It wasn't a he, it was a she. A woman? That's right. A tall woman. A tall woman in a black hat. Can I help you, sir? Yes. What room has Mr. David Hawkins registered in? Mr. Hawkins. Just a moment, sir. What was that first name again, sir? David. David Hawkins, a tall, distinguished-looking man with gray hair. Oh, yes. I remember now. I'm afraid you're too late. Too late? Where is he? I don't know. He was registered here for nearly ten days. He checked out of the hotel about an hour ago. You're crazy, Runyon. Why do you want to come back to Lung Toy's place at this hour of the night? It's after 2 a.m. I'm crazy, all right. Forever letting that frost steam out of my sight. Well, looks like she murdered Toy. That's what you think, Mac. Well, get this tall woman. Who's she? I don't know. But she and June Frost left the hotel together. And why was Toy murdered? Look, Mac, that Chinese box is locked. It can't be opened without the combination to the ivory tumblers. Ah, they can break it open. And ruin the box? Not a chance. No, Mac. Toy was killed because he had the combination. It wasn't on him when we found it. And we didn't find it among any of his papers in the shop. Then the murderer got it. Maybe. Nobody knew Toy had the paper but you and me and June Frost. How does she know it? Because I told her I'd given it to Toy. But why are we coming back here now? I don't get that. I want to look the place over again. But we went over it this evening. We didn't miss a thing. I think we did. What? I don't know, Mac. But I've had the feeling all night that something was wrong. Something was out of place in that shop. Out of place? That's right. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to find out. Well, here we are. Come on, let's go. The lights are over here behind the counter. Okay, look all you want to. I'm going to sit down. I'm tired. You're going to be a lot more tired before you get to sleep again. What are you talking about? We're going to stay here for a while, and we're going to stay awake. It won't take you long to give the place a going over. Now, just quit wasting time talking and look around. I've already found what I was looking for. Then what do you want to stay here for? To catch the murderer. You think the murderer will come back here? I'm sure of it. But why? If the killer got the combination... The murderer didn't get it, Mac. It's still here, right where Lung Toy hit it. What are you talking about? 
Did you notice anything strange as we came in? Anything different? Different? What? I knew there was something, but I couldn't figure it until we came in just now. What is it? Look here, Mac. See? Now, you're nuts. You just opened the door. Looks okay to me. The gong, Mac, the gong. Gong? What about... Oh. It didn't ring when they came in. And it didn't ring this afternoon after Toy was murdered. But I still don't see what that's got to do with... Why didn't it ring? That's what I'm going to find out right now. Here, give me a hand with this chair. Right. Hold it while they stand there. Okay. Is it disconnected? No, everything looks okay, but... Then why won't it ring? Because this was stuffed into the gong where the hammer hits. What is it? Two pieces of paper, Mac. That's where Toy hid the combination to the Laughing Lotus. We've been sitting here in the dark behind this counter for over an hour, Runyon. I don't think the killer's coming back. Keep your shirt on, Mac. Can you see the door? No, but we'll hear it. Remember now, when I nudge you, snap the lights on and come up with your gun in your hand. Okay. Hold it. I think hear something. What's that? Shh. Here's the flashlight. We better hurry. It must be here somewhere. We've got to find it. We've got to. Don't move. Oh, there it is. Two women. The tall woman in the black hat. Yeah, and my beautiful little playmate who buys daggers. You weren't by any chance looking for this, were you, ladies? The combination. That's right. Both have. Look out. Oh. Oh. Don't move, beautiful, or you'll get it, too. Did you get the tall one, Mac? Yeah, she's dead, all right. She shouldn't have tried to pull her gun. Shame to shoot a woman. It's not a woman, Mac. Huh? Look again. It's a wig. Yeah, it slipped in the fall. It's a man. It's it's Hawkins, the guy Toy was trying to buy the box for. Please, Mr. Runyon. I didn't kill Toy or Charlie. Hawkins did it. He made me come with him. Sure, beautiful, sure. Oh, it's the truth, I tell you, the truth. Where's the laughing lotus? It's it's checked at Grand Central Station. Hawkins has the check slip in his pocket. Why is it so valuable, beautiful? I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything, only please, you must believe me. I didn't... Keep talking. The inside of the chest, underneath the black lacquer, is pure jade. It's worth more than $200,000. No wonder nobody wanted to break it open. What about Charlie French? He and Hawkins and I knew about the Latin Lotus. Hawkins hired Toy to buy it. And you and Hawkins crossed French, but he had the other half of the combination, right? <laughs> That's right, but I didn't want it. See, that Hawkins forced me into it. He made me do it all. And that's why he dressed as a woman at the auction and killed French. Yes. You did break into my office, didn't you? Yes. I thought you had the box. I, I knew Toy had called you, but I didn't kill Toy. Oh, you do believe me, don't you? Sure, sure. Don't you believe him, Mac? Yeah. Then you'll help me. You won't let them take me. You and I'll have a swell time, beautiful. You do like me, then? Oh, you're a knockout. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'll do anything for you. Hey, wait a minute, Ronnie. What are you trying to pull, anyway? We'll paint the town red, beautiful. See all the shows, eat the best food. You're wonderful. When do we start? In about 20 years, when they let you out of prison. Prison? That's right, beautiful. Be sure and look me up. I spend my life in getting into trouble and getting out of it. But at the same time, I generally manage to get some other people in and out of trouble, too. I'll be seeing you again. So long. Welcome back. Well, I was almost expecting a surprise last-minute twist from Brad when he was talking about accepting the offer of a date. Because he has had stories where he pulls something out of the hat at the last minute that he hadn't noticed or been expecting. 
But instead, it's an offer to take her up on her date you know, when she gets out of prison. I was a little bit dubious about the uh, female impersonation plot at the auction. That tends to work, or be at least believable, when people are going to only see the person in question for a short amount of time. It seems like, unless you've got a specific uh, talent, you're probably most likely to give yourself away, or at least give some sort of tell sitting in an auction house. Particularly when you, you know, you've got height that's, you know, so striking is going to call attention to yourself. There are so many easier disguises for a guy to go with. This one seems a bit more plot convenient than realistic. Well, now we turn to listener comments and feedback. Kelly writes, Just found your website. Love the shows. Thank you, Kelly. And then uh, we have this note from, and I hope I'm pronouncing the name right, Kayam. Kayam writes, Hey, Adam. It's great to see your work as I enjoy it more than anything I have in my phone. I love listening to your commentary and your analysis, especially after the podcast. I got attached to podcasts while I had severe depression going on, and listening to you was like getting out of it. I listen to podcasts during work and even when I sleep. My all-time fave is Nero Wolf and Rocky Jordan. Thank you so much, Adam, for introducing me to such an amazing world of great detectives. And love from Cardiff, Wales. Well, thank you so much, uh, Cam. So glad to uh, be of service. And I appreciate you listening. All right, I also want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Kelly. Kelly's been one of our Patreon supporters since uh, September 2018, currently supporting the show at the rookie level of $2 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support. Well, that will do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for The Man Called X. And then, coming up this Saturday... Be sure and listen for The Silent Men. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net, follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.